I was recently asked, how many times does it take for you to lose yourself to find out who you really are? My response was, just one more time. That is where my story begins today. I will share with you the abbreviated version of my life story in hopes to help you find yourself just one more time. My life has been a series of just one more times, matched with countless bouts of adversity. Each of those bouts, I lost a part of who I was. But when adversity was at its highest, I found myself stuck at the bottom of a pitch black hole with no way out. At 17 years old, the comfortable, healthy lifestyle I had was drastically about to change. I spent my whole life in the sport of wrestling. See, it had taught me a lot of life, life lessons about you know, teamwork, dedication, hard work, and discipline. Also, it taught me how to gain self-confidence, yet remain humble in the face of each and every accomplishment. And no matter how small the accomplishment may be, that it builds you up, builds your confidence, but not to the level of arrogance. See, I like to think there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. And that fine line is humble confidence. See, it's a route that you must take each and every day. You may veer off this course, but know that this path is full of no regrets and is full of hard life lessons. My life was littered with many hard life lessons in the path of finding myself. My junior year in high school, I tore two ligaments in my left knee during a wrestling match, my PCL and LCL. At that moment, I didn't realize what this meant for all my goals and dreams. And little did I know that I had just ripped the brake lines off of what I considered a fairly normal life and begun down a long, dark path. See, I had plenty of injuries up to this point in my life. I had broken multiple bones, I'd been knocked out cold, and countless other minor injuries along the way. However, I knew that this one injury would change the course of my life forever. This was the first time I truly lost direction in my life. See, this constant reminder of humble confidence was the first stepping stone in the path of finding myself. That this short mantra was, kept me able to stay on this path of progression. See, when you begin to lose hope, you lose sight of everything you have ever wanted. My whole life, I've been religious. But this was the first time I questioned God's plan for me. See, in difficult times, it is easy to want to give up at this first sign of resistance on a path that has always seemed so promising. You begin to question who you are and who you want to be. See, I sensed I was being taught something important, and I didn't want to waste this life lesson. You have two choices in life, learn or fail. And for me, I had made my decision. Failure was not an option. You realize when your body is broken, the only thing left to do is to train your mind. Once you remove all excuses and all the distraction, tunnel vision begins to set in on the goals and dreams that you had once had. You refuse to let anything prevent you from reaching your goal. See, it is easy to want to give up when everyone else around you has the just settle mindset. But that is when you have to develop the foundation for who you want to be. Friends, I've spent my entire life listening to interviews, reading books of successful people and athletes. I've used their story to construct a blueprint of how I wanted to live my own life. See, post-injury and recovery, I committed myself to a physical and mental workout every single day for the next year. These workouts range from 20 push-ups a day to an all-out wrestling practice. This is how I was going to find out who I really wanted to be. But during this time, I was not alone. I made my brother do each and every workout with me. And on the hottest days, I made these workouts even harder. So you could call this brotherly love. I discovered something that summer, that nothing was ever going to be too hard for me again. I found that I must keep going when my mind just screamed to stop. I was hardening the calluses on my mind. See, there's no losing, just learning. Yet, for me, learning was never easy, but it was worth it every second of the way. See, when you intentionally take yourself into the darkness of your mind just to see if you can make it out on the other side, you truly understand you can accomplish more than you ever thought was possible. So through all the pain, doubt, and excuses, you no longer allow your mind to control you, but you can control your mind. See, through all this learning, I fell in love with the journey, just as I had fallen in love with wrestling at four years old. The end goal has been the same as it was back then. But the journey along the way was my happy place. See, when my body was healthy, I developed a new mental and spiritual foundation for myself, the mindset. The mindset consists of nine pillars that you must use 
for each and every task. Those are pray, set goals, make a plan, believe, work hard, stay confident, succeed, thank God, and be humble. These simple reminders of the mindset that I have constructed for myself. Also during this time, I grew in my relationship with God. I found that my belief carried me through this journey. See, the mindset is the nine pillars for you to keep yourself on track of finding yourself. Memorize them. Pull them out as you need along your own journey. See, the first time I really used the mindset was the week before state my senior year. The week before, I suffered a knee injury in the finals match. With one scream, I silenced thousands of wrestling fans. Is my dream gone? I just torn the MCL on my knee. At that moment, I remembered something my brother said earlier that day. He said, there's going to be a time today we're just going to have to give it your all just one more time. So, determined to finish the match, I gave everything I had for the next two minutes and six seconds. After six seconds, defenseless, my coach was forced to end the match. Emotions filled my head as tears ran down my face, yet pain and anger filled my thoughts, and everything that I had just worked for had seemed to just go to waste. I had now qualified for state, but that had affected the route to the top of the podium that year. See, after a night full of tears and prayers, I woke up that next morning and decided I need to go to church today. I felt that God was calling me to attend church, that he had not given up hope on me yet. See, that was the most emotional church service that I had ever witnessed, which included many comforting hugs for my grandmother. Afterwards, I knew God's reasoning to calling me to church that day, that I had found new hope in achieving my dream. I'd begun to remember the nine pillars of the mindset. My mindset. See, feeling inspired, I'd realized something, that I had not done my daily workout. So at 10 o'clock that night, I did everything I could to get one good workout in. It was the best workout I had in 359 days. It was just one more workout, is all I kept telling myself. See, the week before state was filled with knee doctor's appointments, pain, and my daily workouts. I went and saw my mentor and wrestling partner, and I had to figure out whether or not I could wrestle. He told me, the only way you're going to find out is to truly test it. So, after an hour of painful and frustrating drills, he then looked at me and said, now you know what to expect. He then said something that will forever be ingrained in my mind. God's got you. Simple, yet bold and meaningful. That simple phrase not only convinced me to believe in myself, but to believe that this was God's plan for me. Just one more practice is all it took. See, I had won my first match of state, which allowed me to place. Finally, I could stand proudly on the podium on my one good leg. Proud of what I had accomplished, yet I had fallen short becoming a state champ. Just one more match is all I wanted. Though I may not have achieved my goals of being a state champ, I learned that life changes when we least expect it, and we must know how to react when it does. That when you make the tough decision to eliminate all doubt and pursue the one thing you've desired your whole life, you truly understand that the toughest life lessons are taught to those who refuse to let adversity dictate their life. Through all the negativity, will never get you to this point. So you must understand why they say the road to success is lonely, that you only need a small support group. The fact is that when you want something you've never had before, you must do things that you've never thought of doing before. That there will be people in your way of achieving this. See, nobody will be there to do it for you, they'll only be there to motivate you. Most people find themselves during hard adversity. That once you have found yourself, that is only part of the battle that you must keep going, that it only takes just one more time. See, the other part is understanding your purpose with your newfound self. See, we all have a purpose, but sometimes it takes hitting rock bottom again to find it. It looks different for everybody. However, most of the time it comes in the form of losing someone or something. Yet it doesn't have to be a traumatic experience. But for me, it was. Mine comes in many different forms. I fell into a cycle of depression and anxiety. And to some of you, 
Those words are stigmatized as a form of weakness and have a shameful connotation attached to them. That we live in a world where we always must be happy and cheerful. That positivity is the norm. Let us be honest with ourselves and others and stop giving that popular response of I'm okay. Just keep thinking, it takes one more day. See, in my sophomore year in college, I'd lost a lot. I'd suffered another knee injury, preventing me from competing in my first real wrestling season in college. My best friend at the time decided they no longer wanted to be a part of my life. And my grandma, who had given me many free hugs the week of state, passed away. She taught me a lot growing up. She was a woman of strong faith. And she loved to show how she cared with a hug. She would hug anyone and everyone, and for no reason at all. I admired this about her. It was something that always kept me in, on track on the path of finding myself, that it only took just one more hug. As I was processing these losses and struggling with my depression and anxiety, one day I saw the first flicker of light that I've needed in so long. All I could think was my grandma's way of helping others, with a hug. Feeling like I was almost at the end of the path of no return, a friend in college gave me one of the most important hugs of my life. That simple, unprompted hug saved my life. See, when people hug each other, the body releases a hormone called oxytocin, also known as the feel-good hormone. For the first time in months, I had that feel-good moment that my body had been longing for for so long. From that simple hug, it inspired my free hugs movement. Knowing that I'm not the only one going through a tough time, I wanted to help others let them know that they are not alone. I wanted to be able to let them know that they can talk about what they're going through. So I created a mantra to advocate and support for men's mental health. That is, it's okay to hug the homies. Meaning that when I needed a hug more than ever, a friend was there for me. See, during this last year, I've given out many free hugs. And so have many others that believe in what I'm sharing with you today. See, my life story is only a reference guide to helping you find yourself. And to date, I'm still finding myself, and I believe that there's a lot more just one more time. But when was the first time I really wanted to find out my purpose in life? When was the first time? See, as I've said, I've always been a wrestler, yet that title does not define who I am. When I was nine years old, my wrestling coach suddenly died from a stroke. He was also my uncle. My uncle was a modest man. He taught me a lot growing up when I was wrestling. He taught me how to handle success, anxiety, and self-doubt. And despite how young I was, I remember when he passed away. My family asked anybody impacted by his legacy to please pay it forward. At nine years old, I didn't know what that meant. I now realize that that is how I have lived my life. That my uncle is the spark in the story that I have shared with you today. See, I may not have it all figured out. But he has guided me to the point, this point in my journey of finding myself, that it just takes one more time. No matter what you're going through, just keep going. That it only takes just one more time. Physically and mentally understand that there's someone there for you, that you are not alone. See, all of you can be a part in breaking the stigma of treating your mental health like you would treat your physical health. See, you can be that friend for somebody else. You never know. One hug can save someone else's life. Can I give you a hug, sir? <laughs> just one more hug, just one more time. Thank you, and God bless.